Thank you again, Amelia, Nisha, and Connor for your presentations. I now would like to invite my colleague Stephanie Sanders to present the Tri M Music Honor Awards. We truly are blessed with the talents of this class in so many ways. We've heard it a lot tonight, but it's, it's an amazing class. Um, the Tri-M National Music Honor Society criteria for the award of Master Musician dictates the award is presented to a member who excels in music, is highly qualified as a performer with a basic knowledge of music theory, has achieved success in the performance field, and has been particularly active in performing in school and community functions. It is as if the contributors to this criteria for this award had this year's recipient in mind. This award fully encompasses the achievements, accomplishments, and successes of our award winner. The recipient is a motivated learner and musician. He holds himself and others to a standard of music rarely seen in high school students. He is driven and passionate about his music and his performance. Our recipient has shown us his talent on numerous occasions in assemblies, coffee houses, Wolfstock, and recitals. His ethics regarding performance in the music classroom are impressive, and his accomplishments outside of the school community are staggering. Fred Dungott is a master musician. In his high school career, by audition only, he has been named the prestigious Maine All-State Chorus for the past three years. This is no easy accomplishment. He has participated in the UNH Choral Gala along with the District 1 Music Honors Choir. In February, Freddie traveled to New York City to perform at Carnegie Hall with the American High School Honors Choir. These are just a few of his accomplishments. It not only requires dedication and hard work to achieve the honors at this level, but it also takes a skilled musician. Auditioning for these groups is not for the casual student of music. Freddie's master musicianship is not limited to acoustic performance. Freddie's, Freddie's audio video recording of Sleep was accepted by the contemporary American choral composer Eric Whitaker to be a part of the virtual choir 2.0. Freddie, along with 2,000 other voices from around the world, is part of this amazing project in social media. Not to be satisfied with his accomplishments, Freddie took on the challenge of recording a multi-track video with himself learning and singing all the parts of a four-part a cappella piece for his senior project. It is my privilege to recognize Fred Dungott as a recipient of the tri -M National Music Honor Society Award of Master Musician. and her community organizations and activities, in addition to his or her involvement in music classes. The recipient demonstrates exceptional examples of service, working with or on behalf of others without being paid or materially awarded, or rewarded. Those receiving this award are involved in music, but are particularly present and visible musically in school functions and activities. The recipient of this award epitomizes the criteria mandated for this award. It has been my privilege to work with this young musician for the past four years. I first knew the recipient as the boy who never went anywhere without his guitar. Mm. I actually wondered if it was an, ad an added appendage. <laughs> In his sophomore year, I got to know him a little better as a young man who wrote beautiful melodies and incredibly sensitive and personal lyrics and then enlisted everyone in class and beyond to collaborate with him to help deliver his music. In his junior year, he would come into class, borrow the digital recorder, and hide away in a quiet spot to record, re-record, and then rework his music. Each year, I listened with amazement as his music and musicianship became more refined and complex. 
In his senior year, I was thoroughly delighted that I could have this amazing young man in class for one last time. It was an electronic music that another creative side of our recipient emerged. Tristan Mattel is a talented musician, composer, and lyricist. Even bigger than his talent and his selfless, is his selfless sharing of his talent and his music. Tristan is everywhere. On any given assembly, coffee house, or other performance, you will see it here, Tristan accompanying a multitude of students. Tristan is a humble musician, never asking for personal recognition or gratitude. Tristan collaborates with everyone, period. I have never heard Tristan say no to accompanying or helping another student or teacher when it comes to music. Tristan's music has been heard at our new parent and student orientation nights, as well as numerous other public campus events. Tristan graciously has given permission for so many of us to use his music, whether it's in a documentary, a school video, or other personal use. Tristan certainly understands giving and service in relation to his music. We would be a much better world if we could all grow up to be more like Tristan. Yeah. <laughs> it is my pleasure and my honor to present the Triumph Award for service to Tristan. <laughs> excels in the study of English and history. The recipient this year has not only made a lasting impression on both departments, but also serves as a testament to why we require a humanities curriculum in a modern education. Literature, philosophy, art, history, law, the topics we explore help us uncover who we are. They shape our values, help us better understand the complexities of the human condition. Now, when Brian Ron walks across the stage tomorrow, he will do so knowing that he took full advantage of what we have offered. He has used each poem, each novel, each writing assignment as an opportunity to seek deeper meaning and a personal connection. He has developed into an intellectual leader with a set of principles based on social justice, equality, and human dignity, and balanced with a rational and pragmatic approach. Not only that, since his junior year, each of his English and history teachers have thanked him for taking their classes. For me personally, and I think his other teachers would agree, Brian's work reflects exactly what we want every student to aspire to. In fact, many of us have used Brian's work to model our, expect our expectations for future students. At the very least, it is driven by a responsible, methodical work ethic, and at the most, it is an artful reflection of the inner workings of a brilliant mind. Capable and poised, confident yet humble, intellectually curious, uniformly excellent, a true Renaissance man. These are but a few of the words and phrases we have used to describe him and are the reasons why he stood out for this award. So please join me in congratulating Brian Ron. The Parson Thompson Awards go out to outstanding students who have shared their time with others off the hilltop. As we've heard from Brad Fletcher and from Nisha, I think you are all trying to understand the bigger picture of this class. Um, the members of the class of 2011 are not strangers to the needs and struggles of the wider world. 
In fact, perhaps more than any class, this class has their hearts tuned to a more sensitive frequency, a more conscientious of the privileges they hold and the responsibilities they feel to others. From the urgency with which they chose to simplify their lives during the Thoreau Project last year, to their support of their classmates struggling with wellness, or classmates' amazing work to treat children's cancer, like Jordan Sanford's Tucker's Board of Cross for Cancer, to the stewardship they demonstrated in alliance with the GLB community on this campus this year, their collective contributions have been humbling and inspiring to us. I want to sincerely thank this group of students for the compassion they've demonstrated during the time here. Tonight, I'm so pleased to acknowledge two leaders who have pushed this community to open its arms even wider to embrace the world beyond Burke Academy. These two young women have made a great team, and together they've enriched the life of the school and enabled Burke to reach out to those in need. For one young woman, this affinity for service and her natural leadership abilities have helped her to build a stronger outreach program over the past three years. She genuinely cares about others and has a deep felt sensitivity to those suffering from illness and poverty. What she sees and feels in the world reflects profoundly in how she responds to a challenge. She puts her head down and figures out a way to help. Brooke Moschetto strives to do and do her best. In this pursuit, she naturally brings others along with her. If you can picture Owen, Kyle, and Jordan doing a choreographed soft shoe dance to New York, New York, after emceeing a talent show on behalf of the Ebenezer School in Haiti, you will know how well Brooke can use her love for helping people to get great work done. <laughs> for another remarkable young woman, I'm amazed how much she can balance both her huge heart and keen head. She responds to the needs of others by immediately using her passion to get right to work as well. An organized and effective manager, Haley Salas knows how to put a system in place and follow through. She gets it all done and still maintains her signature grace and poise. I joke that Haley Salas may never have been a teenager. <laughs> For example, at that same Haiti fundraiser, Haley was our production manager. She had folders complete with set lists, seating plans, prizes, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? And um, had handmade 100 gorgeous cotton, candy pink, frosted cake pops, cellophane and ribbon for sale at the big sale. Now, how she had time to do that, I have no idea, mm -hmm. but whatever she's got, I know I need a lot more of it in my life. Mm -hmm. um, Haley's efforts have helped to build bridges between Berwick and seemingly far off places like Haiti. Now, I want to bring the two of them up together because they're like this amazing team. So, uh -huh. if you guys can come up for a second. about how we approach charitable fundraising at school. And problem solvers by nature, they researched how our neighboring schools approached philanthropy and came up with a solution during their senior projects um, of creating an outreach foundation that will be put into place next year, which is really exciting. Um, students can now submit proposals to pursue charitable causes they care about, which will then be reviewed by a student run committee. And with some seed money to get the program started, the foundation will be able to match a percentage of the funds raised. And this is just really cool. So um, now I think even more students are going to be encouraged to engage in the life of the community beyond this hilltop by reaching out to others. Um, efforts of these two young women together are inspirational. I am confident they will go out and grace their future colleges with their heartfelt leadership. And I'm so grateful for the work they've done and the path they've paved for others to follow. And as their deputy this year, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do without them uh, next year to tell me what to do. So um, please join me in congratulating Brooke and Shetta. Uh, 
uh, Bill Clark, who will be presenting the 1915 Awards. The Class of 1915 Award is given to a senior who combines the unique talents of excelling in both English and mathematics. The recipient was described as, by Polly Davy, her 11th grade English teacher, as all wool and a yard wide. Unfortunately, I have only been a New Englander for my adult life, so my confusion led me to the internet, and as all Berwick students know, the Urban Dictionary is not a credible reference and should not be quoted. However, all wool and yard wide is a term derived from the garment industry, meaning of high quality and genuine. Since material that was made of one consistent fiber, such as wool, was often considered best for clothing, and fabric was often measured in yards, this was considered a criteria for excellence. Alex Zenos is all wool and yard wide. She is the real deal, an authentic learner who strives for excellence because of her enjoyment and not for recognition of high grades. She has, however, received these. Alex's Irish studies teacher, Patrick Carling, refers to her as a quiet intellectual who is absorbing and contemplating, perhaps more than she leads on. He has always enjoyed reading her writing, which is lively, shrewd, detailed, and cleverly phrased, demonstrating all the hallmarks of a young woman who will thrive in a collegiate literary setting. Zan Melhorn has taught Alex in AP Calculus in her junior year, and in her senior year, she took the second and harder AP Calculus BC course. Ms. Melhorn explains that Alex's effort was evident through her lengthy explanations as she sorted through the algorithmic possibilities. Her solutions were often many pages long, probably giving a clear reason why she was chosen for the math and English award. Alex was able to adapt her artistic brain into a methodological approach answering challenging problems. It was through her continued perseverance that she was able to succeed in our most challenging courses. Alex is a motivated and creative student who enlivens the Berwick community, and she has shown that she, she is not made of wool, but of fine blended material. She is well deserving of the class of 1915 award due to her excellence in both English and math classes. Congratulations. Let's celebrate poetry. The Andres Poetry Prize is given each year in honor of Jane Sutton Andres, wife of former longtime VA art teacher Charlie Andres, and a lover and patron of the arts herself. Each year, we invite students of all grades to submit one or two poems, which are then read and evaluated by a panel of several faculty members from across the departments. This year, we had 16 submissions, and the faculty readers noted their sustained high quality. As a glimpse of the haunting power of the imagery and figurative language of this year's winner, here are the opening lines of her poem, entitled Two Weeks, in which the author is establishing the tenor and slow rhythm of a death vigil. Silence envelops the house, hanging thick in the air like early morning fog. Beyond the tightly shuttered windows, all the shades of gray lay down their arms atop the freshly fallen snow. The sky has surrendered itself to an onslaught of cancerous clouds that traps the sun's feeble beam behind the mass. This year's winner is no stranger to writing, she has been writing songs, and we heard another remarkable one in the comments this evening. Contributing to our literary magazine and been a member of a senior creative writing class that focused mainly on poetry. Please join me in congratulating Elizabeth Hopkins.
Douglas Dara Hollis Memorial Award. Good evening. In my role as the Director of Athletics here at Burke Academy, this is truly one of my favorite nights. I take great pride in recognizing these award winners in this setting in front of their classmates, family, and faculty. The Hilltop Award is presented each year to a male and female graduating senior in recognition of their outstanding athletic skill and accomplishments. I will start with our female Hilltop Award winner, Sophie Merrill. Sophie has had an impressive career here at Berwyn. She has been captain of all three sports during her senior year, soccer, skiing, and lacrosse. She has been an active leader on her teams, being a strong voice and caring, supportive friend. This past fall, Sophie was recognized by her peers as the most valuable player on her soccer team. She won this award not only with, but with her skill and ability on the field, but with her leadership style. Sophie is one of those truly selfless leaders who puts the team goals ahead of her own. She has kept her teams on track with a sense of purpose. Sophie demonstrated patience, nurturing, maturity, and strength in every moment this year and as, as a student athlete. Truly, Sophie was a meaningful and inspirational to her teams. Coach Richie Weinerby, who coached Sophie his last two seasons in soccer, observed, Sophie is one of the kindest, hardworking, positive, got everything going for them individuals I've ever met. Never a bad word about anyone. She was quite possibly one of the easiest people I have ever coached, have had to coach. And if anyone is prepared for the world outside of Berwick, it was her. Coach Kyle Ridgeway, who coaches Sophie in both soccer and lacrosse comments, Sophie is truly one who leads by example. With her continued support of helping her teammates develop and gain confidence individually as players, and thus help the entire group grow and achieve greater success together. Sophie's influence on her teams this year cannot be measured. Coach Scott Maisie, Sophie's ski coach this past winter, was thankful to have Sophie as one of the leaders. Sophie was a great asset to the ski team, always trying to be supportive to each other with a smile on her face. She always seemed to have fun, just a good all-around person. She will do well in life. Sophie has touched many people here at Pro Academy, her teammates, her coaches, her teachers. With grace and dignity, she has earned the award tonight. And it's my honor to present the female Hilltop Award winner to Sophie Rennie. Talk about our boys' Hilltop Award winner, Jordan Sanford. 
Jordan was a highly touted athlete coming out of our middle school, and he did not disappoint. He made the varsity soccer and lacrosse teams as a freshman, and immediately presented himself as a determined, coachable, and impacting athlete. Jordan went on to become captain and an all-league performer in both soccer and lacrosse. Jordan's leadership helped lead the boys' soccer team to an undefeated league championship this past fall. Coach Patrick Conley had the opportunity to coach Jordan in both soccer and lacrosse, and he observes. Jordan takes very good care of himself and possesses strength, speed, and intelligence. His name, jersey number, and dogged style are so well known throughout the league. He has received all-star recognition in both sports, as well as MVP consideration. As a teammate and captain, there are a few better in my experience. Perhaps the most telling comment came from the scout report from the Pingree passed on to Beaver last fall. When Beaver asked Pingree about, Pingree about BA, Pingree said, they're tough. Remember that blonde-haired number 10 from last year? Watch out, he's better. <laughs> Coach Andrew Kasperzak coached Jordan for two years in lacrosse and shared his thoughts. Jordan's work ethic and relentless spirit were never born from personal goals or selfish pursuits, all league status, status or point totals. Instead, his dogged determination that defined his play and his tenacious humility in which he led his teams were created by his desire for the team accomplishment of their goals and for his school to feel pride and success. Coach Bill Clapp, as the cross coach comments, there was little doubt that Jordan was the heart and soul of our team. This player has a great talent who we want to have on the field as much as possible, whose work ethic is superior to others and most importantly, makes every around, everyone around him better. Finally, I had the honor to coach, coach Jordan in lacrosse during his sophomore season. He was fun to coach because he knew he loved the game. His effort was tiring, <coughs> his play was relentless, his enthusiasm was infectious. Thank you. I remember thinking, wow, he's only a sophomore. And he definitely not, did not disappoint. Jordan has most assuredly left his legacy here at Berwick in both lacrosse and soccer. It's my pleasure and honor to present him male Hilltop Award winner, Jordan Sanders. given in honor of Marie Donahue and is presented to an outstanding senior for their exceptional commitment and contribution to the Academy. Ms. Donahue was valedictorian of the Burwick Academy class of 1937 and returned to teach at the school after receiving her bachelor's and master's degree from the University of New Hampshire. Her professional career at Burwick and beyond spanned 47 years. People who knew Ms. Donahue often describe her as embodying the soul of the academy, taking every opportunity to teach and live the mission of the school. Tonight, we have two recipients of this award. Many faculty remember this first recipient from his ninth grade days when he entered Berwick. Full of energy and promise, he stood out early to his teachers and classmates for a variety of reasons. First and foremost was his infectious smile. He looked at you right in the eye and engaged you directly. And I remember clearly walking around and bumping into him. And every time we crossed paths, there was a very enthusiastic, hello, Mr. Saliba, how are you doing? <laughs> Coming from a ninth grader, that was truly exceptional. There was something precocious about his manner, something that you knew down inside revealed, revealed something very important about his personal character. He really cared about people. What has distinguished this young man over his four years is his ability to build relationships with all members of the school community. He has incredible social intelligence, which allows him to bridge gaps, extend friendships, and to draw together the strengths of those around him. I have come to trust his judgment in many matters and hold the highest respect for all his contributions that have made this school a better place. No one can challenge the fact 
that this year has been an outstanding one due to his presence and his leadership. He clearly embodies the spirit of Marie Donahue, and it is my honor to present this award to Owen Michael LeBruce. defines our very own colloquial term, Berwickian. I'm pretty convinced that she bleeds blue and white. And this is not because she is dressed up with a bulldog at our home contest, but it's because she's always on the field. This recipient is defined by her willingness to jump in and give it her all in everything she does. She is a competitor, and this attribute has served her well throughout her time at the Academy. Although I have never taught her in the classroom, I've had the opportunity to be her coach for four years. On many occasions, she has plopped herself down on my couch and elaborated on many of the things that either I should be doing or things that I can be doing better. <laughs> the, best, the best part about it is that she was right. And I was thankful not only for her words of criticism, but also for her words of support. The balance she displayed in those conversations defines her approach to life. She is tough, but caring. She works hard, but also has an equal measure of fun. And she has laughed during her entire 13-year journey through the Academy, along with a few tears. For extraordinary dedication to Berwick and the values of Marie Donahue, please join me in honoring Haley Adelaide. Performances, all of which have left us wanting more. 
Athletically, he's been an essential member of a swim team that suddenly emerged as a source of great institutional pride as well. And all of these qualities and accomplishments are noteworthy, but I believe he's deserving of this award tonight for his courage above all else. Adolescence is all about discovering yourself and growing more comfortable in your own skin. And this young man, along with a number of his classmates, had the courage to share his own personal experience of coming to know himself during a recent GSA assembly. Leadership is about making those around you better, and it was in large part because of his willingness to take this kind of risk that our entire community was able to grow and shine. It was a gift that assured me that I am in the right place and we are moving in the right direction. As president of his class, it's clear his fellow graduates admire these same qualities. There have been many opportunities for this young man to turn inward or retreat to places and people that were risk-free or comfortable. And instead, he's chosen to embrace every aspect of life at this school, not simply the ones in which he has been directly involved. In my opinion, American University will be welcoming a leader of the highest caliber next year, someone whose sense of self is so strong that he's ready to tackle any challenge in his path. For his example of multifaceted leadership and courage, please join me in congratulating our first Head of School Award winner, Daniel McKenna.
will conclude tonight with two additional student presentations. First, Sophie Marrow will share some shop thoughts on poetry and her journey to Burbank. Everything and danced upon hearing the first note of the theme song for the video, Air Life of the South. 
<laughs> An assembly witnessing the performances from the likes of Pooh Bear and the village people. During the encounter on this January, we watched hordes of students race across the tundra of fog field, pulling semi frozen classmates behind them in plastic sleds. And at any given time or place on this campus, you could have heard the AP French class belting out the soundtrack up to the musical of Notre Dame de Paris. It's these zany moments of wildness combined with those of still and peaceful idleness that make Berwick a precious place to be and make us blessed to be here. This class and the school are precious in many ways. And the one that's always been the most important to me is this distinct and decidedly wild personality that we have. It's apparent in events at the Gay Straight Alliance Assembly when an entire column period was devoted to open and honest conversation. We saw it in senior arts night when we were floored by sorry. When we were floored by our classmates' bravery and talent. It was most pronounced in our campfire sing along during the senior overnight at Camp Winona. We made s'mores and sang songs together for a solid half hour or hour um, in the same spot where four years ago we met for the first time as nervous freshmen. Since then, our class's moral personality has helped us make some truly precious memories. Idle, blessed, wild, and precious. As we look ahead to tomorrow, when we'll make our last memory as a class, I ask you to think about these four words and how they apply to you. As for me, I may not have always been idle, but I most certainly have been blessed. And I don't know what I'll do with the next four years, or the next seven, or the next twelve, but I know what I have done. I have lived a wild and precious life here in the company of the wildest and most precious people of all, the class of 2011. Danny McKinnon will be our final student performance this evening. He will be playing God Bless the Broken Road by Rascal Flatts.
Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. 